Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys for being here. I hope you guys are doing well. In today's video, I'd like to have a little chat on what's going on in South China Sea. Now, in one of my videos, I talked about this topic, the rising tension in South China Sea between China, the Philippines, and the other neighboring countries in that region. Those countries which have a you know territorial dispute with China. Now, recently I've seen some very interesting news and updates on this topic and i thought this is very important information and is worth sharing now if you have any additional information you'd like to share you're more than welcome to do that in my comments section below let's start with the first one i have some notes here so if you see me looking down i'm going through my notes okay let's start with the first one the former president of the philippines rodrigo duterte allegedly made a gentleman's agreement with the chinese government for handling tensions in the South China Sea. As I've mentioned in my previous video, the Duterte administration wanted to appease China. So um, allegedly, he made this secret agreement with the Chinese government, and it entails that Duterte enjoined the Chinese government to observe the status quo and the disputed waters, which meant there would be no construction of military outpost. Duterte allegedly agreed that his government would only send basic supplies to the stranded ship, that BRP Sierra Madre, which is stationed in the shallow waters of Second Thomas Shoal. So that ship, that wreckage of a ship, I'm going to put a picture on the screen, is manned with Filipino sailors and troops. And of course, they need to you know, they need to have those basic needs, food, water, and so the Filipino government um, um, regularly conduct this resupply mission to provide those basic needs. Now, there is some concern on the Chinese end. The Chinese officials are concerned because they are alleging that the Philippines, now that we now have a new president, they're alleging that we are not just, the Philippines is not just bringing in basic supplies, but also bringing in construction materials and of course since they claim that that second Thomas Shoal is a part of their territory they want to make sure that the Philippines don't do any type of repair on the ship that is falling apart that probably needs to be repaired okay and of course they want to make sure that the Philippines don't do any type of construction building you know military outposts because that's exactly what they're doing on the other islands <laughs> They want to make sure that the Philippines don't do that. All right, so that's their concern. According to the Chinese officials, they have claimed that the Philippines violated an earlier agreement that only basic supplies would be delivered to Filipino sailors and troops and not construction materials. So again, that's the concern. And now that we have a new president, um, Bongbo Marcos, he denied any um, knowledge of this alleged agreement he said i was not aware of this agreement but in my opinion this is my opinion okay i don't really think it matters whether he knows or he he had knowledge of this agreement or not because he wasn't the president then you know that was duterte that was the agreement with duterte now that he is the president he doesn't have to really abide by that agreement unless this agreement is like signed and really like is an official agreement not just the president, but the country itself. But it looks like this is some sort of a verbal agreement. But anyways, they're doing, um, the Marcus administration is doing investigation on this and, you know, checking if this is actually a real legitimate agreement. But Marcus denied any knowledge. He said, I was not aware of this agreement. And this is his statement. According to President Bongbo Marcus, I am horrified by the idea that we have compromised through a secret agreement, the territory, the sovereignty, and the sovereign rights of the Filipinos. And actually, during that time, there were rumors, and this was just rumors, okay, that in exchange for that so-called agreement, you know, Chinese, China, China, the Chinese government is supposed to provide the Philippines with um, fund funding for those projects, you know, infrastructure and all so-called, all that stuff. But again, I don't think that went through, so... That's another topic to talk about. So that's the first update. So that's kind of controversial, not kind of controversial, that's controversial because there's also mixed statements on this one. Um, a person who used to work for the Duterte administration, I'm gonna put his name on the screen because I can't recall. I think his last name is Roque, Ruki. I can't say it properly. He said, yes, there was an agreement, but then another person said, no, there was no such agreement. So yes, they're doing an investigation on this. All right, let's move on to the next update. 
the recent harassment, the gray zone harassment. As I mentioned in my previous video, every time the Philippine government um, conducts this resupply mission, there's there's this harassment um, from the Chinese um, Coast Guard because obviously they're doing their job. They claim that that is a part of their territory. So every time they see that the Philippine government um, is, you know, bringing in this resupply mission and they determine that we've crossed something, there's some sort of border there that we're not supposed to cross. And they see that, then they, they act because that's technically their job, right? All right. A Chinese Coast Guard ship used water cannon against the fisheries vessel, the BRP Bancao, and two other Chinese Coast Guard ships hit the Philippine Coast Guard ship, the Bar BRP Bagakai, simultaneously from both sides, damaging part of its deck, railing, and a canopy. Looks like all of the ships from the Philippines are, they start with BRP, because the one from Shira, the one in the, that station in the, that wreckage of a ship is called BRP Shira Madre. So apparently, again, another tension in there, another harassment, but all of this is like gray zone harassment. They, you know, some people get hurt or some damage on the ship, but not enough to really invoke that treaty. Now, China called its action a necessary measure. The Philippines has violated China's sovereignty with its action, according to Gan Yu. He is the spokesperson for China's Coast Guard. And he said, China will continue to carry out actions to defend its rights in the Chinese waters according to law and will resolutely uphold our country's maritime rights. So again, they insist that it, that is a part of their territory so obviously they will do their job their coast guard will protect what they claim to be their territory so i hope and pray that you know all of these is like gray zone harassment but sooner or later you know the more tension the more like every time they're they're doing they conduct this resupply mission there's always something going on and sooner or later you're gonna find that this is gonna keep on escalating and then someone's going to get really hurt and let's hope and pray that that doesn't happen all right so that's the recent updates on that resupply mission and i don't know how many times what's the schedule on that because it seems like every couple of months there's tension in there because they do that resupply mission so let's move on to the next topic i had to cut that video because i started to lose energy <laughs> I needed more caffeine. Okay, so Senator Francis Escudero urged the Bureau of Immigration on Thursday, April 25th, 2024, to shed light on the reported increase of Chinese students in Cagayan region that has raised concern over national security, especially amid ongoing territorial dispute between the Philippines and China. So this one is concerning for a lot of Filipinos because the Philippines all of a sudden has an influx of Chinese students and they're going to this specific region in the Philippines. The Philippines is very, very welcoming when it comes to the foreign students. We have a good number of foreign and exchange students from Africa, countries like Nigeria and Kenya. Kenya. We have a lot of students from South Korea, Japan. And, you know, it's apparently it's cheaper to go to school in the Philippines. I would assume so. Yeah. And we have a good environment when it comes to the schools. Um, nice weather. I mean, there's so many reasons why you would want to go to school in the Philippines. You know, you'd be a student and also a tourist at the same time. All right, but the concern is this. If the number was, I'd say, stable going up every year, that would be a different story. But all of a sudden, there's this increase, and it's a sudden increase. So people are wondering why all of a sudden we have all of these Chinese students. And also, most foreign students, exchange students, going to the Philippines to study usually pick the big schools. I'm talking about the University of the Philippines, what else? University of Santo Tomas, De La Salle University, you know, the Ivy League schools in the Philippines. And that makes sense because you want to go to school that's well known. But the fact that they're going to a specific region in the Philippines is somewhat intriguing or suspicious for a lot of people. And I'm not saying that the schools in Cagayan region is not good. I've heard it, they have really good schools. And apparently, they have really good programs when it comes to foreign students. They make it easier to they have an easier program to where it's it'll be easier for foreign student to um to get accepted into this their schools i'm not sure if that's true that that's what i heard and they said that's one reason why they're going there 
and I've never been to that region. My, my dad had, and he said it's a really nice place. It's very clean. It's very developed. So that could be one reason. Of course, the price is another reason. But again, it's just not common, to be very honest. So that's why probably people are kind of wondering why. So people are suspicious for a reason. And in a television interview, Escudero, this is the senator, he is also the chairperson of the Senate Committee on Higher Education. He said that in the event of a Senate investigation, the Bureau of Immigration should be the first agency to be summoned to explain its procedures in allowing the entry of Chinese national, especially students in the country. He noted that while the Bureau of Immigration is being strict to Filipinos traveling abroad, they are being lenient with when it comes to the entry of Chinese nationals. So they are apparently going to um, launch an investigation on this because the locals are concerned. I want to be like, you know, be fair. Maybe they're just going to the Philippines because it's cheaper. Maybe they like that Filipinos are hospitable. Maybe they really, this school in that region maybe have some sort of special programs where it's much easier to get into the Philippines. But, you know, it is a concern for a reason. And I think this is also the same concern that we have here in the U.S. So we're going to leave it at that. What do you think? If you have any opinion on that, you're more than welcome to do that in the comment section below. Let's move on to the next video before I start. Not video. Next topic before I start rambling. Okay, so this one is um, about what's going on in Indo-Pacific um, amid China and Taiwan tensions. So apparently Germany sent two warships to the Indo-Pacific region on Tuesday in a bid to strengthen its military presence in the region and amid rising tensions between China and Taiwan and over the disputed Ch South China Sea. Again, this is this tension is rising for a reason and let's hope it doesn't get any worse than what it is now. But, you know, Taiwan is another story and that's a big conversation. Now, those tensions were putting pressure on the freedom of navigation and free passage on trade routes. That's why that South China Sea is very important. Defense Minister Boris Pistorius um, said during um, at the Northern German Navy base, and I can say this words, so I'm just going to put it in the screen, <laughs> Welshelm Shaben. <laughs> can't say it properly but he said that yeah this those tensions in south china sea were putting pressure on the freedom of navigation and free passage on those trade routes some 40 percent of 40 percent of europe's foreign trade flows through south china sea that's a lot 40 percent okay that's why that region is very important that south china sea is very important and you can only imagine what would happen if that is controlled by one country Hmm. All right, so that's the video for today. I don't want to make this video any more longer than what it is. If you have anything you'd like to add, you're more than welcome to do that. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.